This is the new Kinefinity Mavo Edge 8K. This is a Synity review, supported by B&H and CVP. Hi guys, I'm Johnny from Synity, and today on my table is the new Kinefinity Mavo Edge 8K. This is just a preliminary hands-on review, simply because the camera is not 100% ready yet. It will be very soon, but for now, I had the privilege to run with it, and yeah, I would love to share my thoughts with you guys. But I would like to start and say that I know Kinefinity since, what, 2013, and it's really amazing to see how the company has progressed. I mean, the, the, the products themselves, they are so much more robust now, and very much, you know, it's, it's, it's very nice to see where the company stands now. And the Kinefinity Mavo Edge 8K is simply a beautiful camera. And if you really care about the look of a tool, and we know a tool is just a tool, I'm sure you'll find yourself staring at the camera quite a bit. It's very lightweight, it's 1.2 kilo. It's made from carbon fiber. The camera will handle a variety of resolutions, frame rates, and codecs, but I would like to highlight the top of it. So in 8K, you can record up to 75 frames per second. In 5K, you can record up to 120 frames per second. If you go to 2K, you can record up to 300 frames per second. When it comes to codecs, you have a variety of ProRes codecs, with the highest one being ProRes XQ. The camera will also record simultaneously an H.264 preview clips, um, but personally, I found it really very low resolution. Also for editing, it was not so easy to know if the footage is in focus or not. When talking about resolution, I think it's important to highlight that if you choose to work in 4K instead of 8K, for example, you're actually still oversampling, meaning you will keep your field of view, there is no crop into the picture, so it's really a matter of how you choose to work. Uh, we hear from Kinefinity that they prefer, like for, for the highest uh, dynamic range, they prefer if you will work on 4K. Uh, we haven't tested it yet because again, this is, uh, the, the firmware is not final, but when we will get the camera back, we will test 8K and 4K and actually we will be able to determine where, what is the best dynamic range this uh, camera can produce. Like with their previous models, Kinefinity is very flexible with the mount options. They have their own Kine mount, and to this one, you can add PL mount, it can be E mount, and EF mount, and, and such. The thing is, some of those are active and some are passive. EF is active, meaning you can actually control the aperture of the lens uh, from the camera, but the E mount and the PL mounts are passive. The camera menu was very easy to navigate and the buttons layout was very logical for me to use. You have total control on so many functions, but I would like to highlight the electronic ND, like with Sony, Sony made it before, but in this camera it's also implemented extremely nice. With a touch of a button you go from clear to an ND filter and then you just have to twist the knob and control the strength of the ND filter itself. This, together with the lens aperture, gives you a complete control on your depth of field. Next is dual ISO. This is becoming like a standard in our industry, and again, Kinefinity is not uh, staying behind. So the two base ISOs in this camera is 640 and 2560. All in all, I had such a clean, nice picture. And also in low light, you can really go up to 16,000 and still have a proper picture. When it comes to connectivity and powering, I was very happy that I could connect the LCD and my EVF, each with only a single cable. To power the camera, I used the Anton Bauer Titan V-mount battery, and the camera has actually at the back a very nice solution. You can either use a V-mount or Sony BPU battery, so it's really up to you. But both are now at the back of the camera, 
and this is part of the camera itself. When it comes to audio, the camera has two full-size XLR connectors on top. It has an internal mono microphone and there is also the ability to connect a 3.5mm stereo microphone to the camera. So all in all you have four channels. One and two are reserved to the XLR, XLRs and three, four are for the stereo 3.5 microphone. Now I would like to talk about the other innovation and this is the recording media. First, the camera has two SSD slots, but it's actually the recording media which is very interesting. What Kinefinity did, they moved away from the normal SSD into KineMug Nano and this is an SSD based on the NVMe M.0 SSD, meaning the uh, data transfer rate is much, much higher. This is also smaller. So at the end, what you get is a very small piece of uh, a very robust and solid uh, SSD that you can use. But more than that, it has actually the USB-C connector on it. So this is a good thing that you don't need another piece of equipment and adapter and so on. But one thing to note, you, currently you cannot delete any clips from the SSD itself. Uh, Kinefinity implemented this safety feature. You cannot do this on camera while watching the clips and you cannot do this on the computer when you connect the uh, SSD to the computer. The only way you can do this is just simply by completely formatting the card. Uh, yeah, what can I say? I would prefer to be able to uh, control this on the camera, for example, or also on my laptop and just simply delete clips that I don't need or don't want, but I do understand why Kinefinity did this. Yeah, I don't agree, but I understand. So that means that you will need quite a lot of those uh, SSD magazines with you. But yeah, before you kind of spend all your money on the Kinemag, there's another option from Kinefinity, and I think it's quite nice that they're offering this, and that's the empty shell of the Kinemag itself, and then you can buy off the shelf from any other brand, this uh, Nano SSD NVMe 2.0, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is a good compromise. Of course, Kinefinity cannot guarantee the performance of, of those, but I think, I hope that uh, maybe in the near future, they will also have in their site some approved uh, SSDs that actually can be used with, with their empty shell. So just to summarize it all, it's a completely new full frame camera up to 8K up to 75 frames per second, very lightweight. I can see this easily used by, you know, can be for documentary, can be for commercials, can be for so many really, but such a, a, a big variety of productions. You can put it on drones, you can do whatever you like with this. Um, now, this is a bit of the elephant in the room and originally when Kinefinity announced the camera they were talking about ProRes RAW being included, included as a codec in the camera. A few months ago they announced that actually there will be no ProRes RAW in the camera from obvious reasons, that's how they stated it and I can only presume they're talking about the red, uh, the red uh, cinema patent, meaning the way that the RAW is being recorded and implemented in the camera. I don't want to talk about now about, you know, about this whole issue, but one thing I do want to talk about, and this is the price of the camera and what was originally promised. Currently, the price of the camera will be almost $12,000 or euro. And originally this price also included the actual uh, ProRes RAW. So now there is no ProRes RAW in camera and you know, I think it would have been fair maybe to offer the camera in sub $10,000. And then in the future, if anybody would like to, or if there would be a possibility to purchase separately the RAW function, the internal RAW recording, maybe then Kinefinity can add a price to it. Meaning, if you want the camera with, a, with a, a recording ProRes, normal ProRes, but really high quality up to 4444XQ, you have it in the camera at a certain price. But if you would like to unlock the uh, ProRes, or sorry, if you'd like to, to unlock the raw capabilities of the camera, maybe in the future, maybe you were willing to pay extra for it. So I think that would be a nice compromise between what was originally promised 
and the current price. But of course, I will let uh, Kinefinity deal with this. But uh, if I have to conclude, it's a very capable camera. The images are lovely. LoRa capability is fine. Audio functionality is good. The, the, the sound was really nice. I mean, and that, this is something that I didn't have in previous models with Kinefinity. I think the sound, when you connect the XLR, uh, to microphones to it, it's really good. By the way, the video that you're about to see, uh, I had to use external microphone and the audio is not or was not recorded on camera because of me, nothing to do with Kinefinity. I was just looking for shortcuts and ease of use and do this because we really had a very limited time to do everything. Good. Um, let's see the footage that I took that was shot in less than a day. Uh, it's about Deborah and that's her story. Deborah is a professional photographer. I've known her for years but I haven't seen her for years and it was really nice to catch up literally in front of the camera and hear how she's doing. Previously I talked about the different mount options and I also want to mention the lenses that I used for the upcoming video. So when it comes to Sony E-mount, I use the SLR Magic 35mm, uh, it's a mini cine lens, and I also use the Laura 10 to 18mm lens. Both are uh, full frame, but I have to say, it was, uh, my feeling is that it was a bit difficult for those lenses to resolve the 8K resolution. I also use the Mavo Primes, those are full frame primes from Kinefinity themselves. And yeah, I think of course they are nicer to work with, but a little bit bigger. Good, all in all, that's what I have to say about the new camera. I hope to get it again for another round, just to check, check the dynamic range and if needed to go even deeper. I really enjoyed working with it and I also want to thank Deborah for spending the time with me and of course to Luciano, our team member who edited the video. Guys, enjoy what you're about to see and you know what? I'll say goodbye right after the video. So let's watch first. I am Deborah. I am an Italian Austrian girl, a big girl. I am a visual artist. I am a photographer. And I'm a mother of two children, big children. And, and now I'm here and I tell you a story, my story. Okay, in my works, photography works, I'm working very much with reflections. Reflections are my philosophy. Usually I move in three areas of photography. The one is street photography. On the street, everything is about human life, culture and emotion. And abstract photography, where I can leave my fantasy, like a painter, for example. And nature photography, where I find my peace of mind. These are the three parts of my works in photography. I was born in Milano, in Italy. I have two brothers. We were living there with my mother because my parents were divorced. My mother was a poor a poor woman, yes. She was very frustrated and very strict because she had a dream of a big family, a big happy family, and her dreams didn't come true. And my mama non le piaceva, era molto triste poi. If we have to work in the childhood as photo models, when other children uh, went to the park, we went to castings and shootings. And so maybe it's a big dream of other people, but uh, if you are a child, this is not a, a, a nice dream. Era, come si dice, l'inferno. Then we started a new life in Karinciek, Klagenfurt. 
I went to Vienna for studying at the university and I got my babies <laughs> too. It was a very interesting um, time and uh, a very important part of my life. The children grew up and um, I was looking for me. And what about me now? And last year I have a very heavy incident. Con la bicicletta ho perso la testa and la, la spalla. It was a very heavy time because I was so near to the death. I'm now I'm starting a new life again, <laughs> like a cat for seven, seven lives. <laughs> <laughs> Orga. Okay, you want to know who is Orga? Orga is, um, is my assistant now. Olga came to me, into my world, after the accident. It was my first try to work again. Olga is, is making everything I make. Um, window cleaning, <laughs> eating, uh, take a shower, everything. And then is another part of this project I show the relationship about her and me. Oh, if Olga is sitting on this chair and she is telling about me, um, she would say, Debbie is a cool woman. <laughs> Crazy but cool and funny. <laughs> and about 20 years old. I met my mother in a park and we spoke together about the past. And I said to her, I forgive you everything, but I cannot forget. I think it's very important to understand people, not always to say, this is bad, but to understand and to forgive. Um, posso leggere una cosa? But to read? Can I read? Yes, and say? Okay. In a few words, everything is a reflection. Our daily thoughts, our relationships, and even the state of our nature is a reflection of our behavior. Art, religion, politics and the economy reflect our society. The education and the environment in which we grow up are also a reflection of our life. Our characters reflect what we are and the photography reflects visions, emotions and images that we see and feel everywhere. E adesso provo di essere io. Only me. Guys, thank you very much for watching. And yeah, I'll see you again very soon with a new fresh camera review. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you guys. Yeah.